Good morning, everyone, and a happy Saturday. Taking a live look out over in downtown Denver just as the sun is starting to come up. Today is the day that we're going to start to make that transition into our fall-like weather. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Anusha Roy. We've got Chris here with us this morning. Tomorrow is the official start of fall, and my goodness, is Mother Nature delivering on that? Right on time, Anusha. Last day of summer 2024. Today, as you said, tomorrow, first day of fall. And wait until you see this forecast. If you like like fall, you are going to love this one. We are dry and quiet right now across the state, but this will not last a lot longer. There's a weather system spinning here over Arizona, and as that lifts off to the east northeast over the next 24 hours, our weather is certainly going to change. Right now, it's pretty quiet out there. Temperatures actually very comfortable. We're in the 60s here in Metro Denver, but I do want to point out Cheyenne 49. There's a cold front sitting right on the Wyoming, Colorado state line as that cold air moves in. It's going to keep our temperatures. We're not going to move a whole lot today uh, is what I'm trying to say. Here's the future cast. We're going to see uh, mostly quiet conditions through your morning as the afternoon uh, approaches. Clouds increase from the south along with the precipitation. Most of this weather is going to be overnight tonight, so you can really get away with a pretty uh, nice day here for your Saturday. Free water on the way. Mountain snow, some rain here in the lower elevations, much cooler. The arrival of fall. Anusha will have a weather alert day starting at uh, 5 p.m. today. We'll detail that in the forecast coming up. Yeah, I've got a little bit of everything. Thanks so much for that, Chris. Near overnight, Aurora police say a man has died after he was shot several times Friday evening. This happened around 845 last night at the intersection of East Colfax Avenue and Helena Street. Officers responded to reports of a shooting at a business there. One man was rushed to the hospital where he later died. Investigators say there was an argument that turned into a fight and then the shooting. Right now, police have not named any suspects. The jury in the trial of the King Supers shooting will continue its deliberations on Monday after jurors heard closing arguments yesterday. The shooter faces 10 counts of first degree murder and dozens of other charges. Attorneys on both sides summed up their cases. For the defense, there is no argument that the shooter carried out the March 2021 shooting, but they want a jury to find him not guilty by reason of insanity, claiming he was schizophrenic and hearing voices on the day of the shooting. He's hearing those killing voices as he gets in the car and drives to the boulder. He's hearing those killing voices as he drives into the parking lot. He's hearing those killing voices until he starts shooting. District Attorney Michael Doherty stressed that the shooter was sane as evidenced by his planning and the DA said that he had made notes on his phone about how to carry out an attack and told doctors that he spent February practicing so that he would be ready for the day of the shooting. He hid his prep and his intentions from his family because he knew what we know from hearing from them. They would all think what he was doing was wrong. His realization that they knew it was wrong reflects that he also knew it was wrong. Don't reach the decision that he's built to based on an emotional reaction. Reach that decision as evidence demands and requires. Again, the jury will be reconvening on Monday to get a conviction. Prosecutors need the jury to conclude that the shooter was sane the day of that shooting. All the doctors who evaluated his sanity concluded that he was. A man accused of killing a mother and her teenage son while driving drunk near Broomfield High School has now pleaded guilty to two counts of vehicular homicide. Jose Menevar is accused of causing that crash on December 12th. This was at the intersection of Main Street and Miramont Boulevard. It killed Melissa Powell and her 16-year-old son. Menevar was sentenced to a year of work release for a prior DUI conviction. That was just four days before this crash, but they didn't have any open beds, so a judge let him go until then. During those sentencings, prosecutors wanted Menyavar to serve jail time, saying he was a danger to the community. They were overruled by the judge who had said that he had already served 100 days in jail. Menyavar is now set to be sentenced for this deadly crash on November 8th. As RTD has been working to expand its forces, it's looking to fill one more spot right at the top for a new police chief. This is after parting ways with Joel Fitzgerald. The transit agency announced a separation yesterday without getting into specifics. During his two-year run as police chief, Fitzgerald increased the size of the RTD police force, added 24-7 patrols. He has been on leave since July 1st and last month received $5 million from the city of Fort Worth in Texas. The payout settled a lawsuit filed in 
2019, which claimed that Fitzgerald was fired as Fort Worth's police chief for reporting city violations. RTD never told us why it placed Fitzgerald on leave. The transit agency told us that it will name an interim chief soon. Fed up about their pay, a group of Denver school teachers walked out of class on Friday. This happened at Lincoln High School near Federal and Evans. Educators say they didn't get the raises that they were counting on. All of this is going back to a contract that was signed in 2022. The district and the teachers union had agreed if certain funding criteria was met, teachers would get annual cost of living adjustments, basically raises, but it hasn't happened. Union members say that they're not even getting half of the raises that they were promised. Many teachers are struggling, getting second jobs, um, and this situation is just making everything that much harder. We want to be here for our kids, but we have to be able to provide for our basic needs. Back in March, both the district and the union told us that it wouldn't have the money to pay out the raises, but the teachers union is disagreeing. Both sides are currently in arbitration. We'll be monitoring that to see if it impacts the next round of negotiations between DPS and the union. The current agreement expires next August. Making national headlines right now, the Secret Service released their report on the attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump in Pennsylvania. In it, the agency is admitting to failures that led to that attempt. The report found bad planning and poor communication between agencies caused a security lapse that allowed a shooter to fire at Trump on July 13th. It also claimed a, quote, high operational tempo for the security breach, suggesting that the agency may have been stretched too thin. Ahead of the release, the acting head of the Secret Secret Service had claimed local officials had failed to secure the roof that was used by the shooter and then never talked to the Secret Service prior to the shooting. There was a discussion about how the, the roof uh, was going to be secured, and I think what it came back to is we should have challenged what that, how that mechanism uh, was, was being implemented, meaning we should have been more direct. We, ha we, cannot be too, we cannot be overly deferential to state and local law enforcement. We, ultimately, it's our responsibility, and so we just have to be very clear when we're asking them for support. The House of Representatives did vote unanimously on Friday to approve a bill that would make sure presidential candidates are getting the same level of security as sitting presidents. In an NBC exclusive, there has now been a dramatic rise in the death of pregnant women in Texas following the state's abortion ban. The number of women in Texas who died while pregnant during labor or soon after childbirth drastically spiked after the state's 2021 ban on abortion care. From 2019 to 2022, the rate of maternal death in Texas jumped by 56 percent compared to just 11 percent nationwide during that same period. While pregnancy deaths spiked overall during the COVID-19 pandemic, deaths have consistently risen in Texas following the state's ban on abortion.